Shalom, brethren. I greet you today in the name of Yahuwah, our Heavenly Father, and the name of Yahusha, His only begotten Son, our Messiah. My name's Moshe Eliyahu. Today, I'd like to speak about the new Brit, or the new covenant. We call it the New Testament. Hallelujah today. Subtitle, I will put my laws in their hearts. As we get into what Yehusha told Jeremiah to write, all things by the Father was done through the Son, Yehusha. So, so he instructed Jeremiah to write, the Mashiach did, 31, 31 through 33 is what we're going to be using today, only I'm only going to use part of verse 33. I think it will be sufficient. It says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So, showing us the two houses was split. Hallelujah at this time. And as we continue, the 33rd verse says, I will put my laws, our law, in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Now, he's talking through Jeremiah, the Yehusha is, our Messiah, says, I will put my laws in their inward parts. Now, how does he do that? By you and I studying the Bible, studying the scriptures, studying the word. Hallelujah today. And he writes it in their hearts, our minds, in other words, and will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. This is how we become Yahuwah's people, is when we repent, receive the Holy Spirit, and are converted. Then we read his word and study. Hebrews says this about the same thing. Hebrews ten sixteen. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Master, talking about the Israelite body of believers says, I will put my laws in their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. So he's saying the same thing to, through the writer Hebrew, the master does, says, I will put my laws in their hearts, and mine will I write them. As we study and read the scriptures, the word, the new bread or the new covenant, plus the first covenant, people who become converted, brethren, circumcised in the heart by the Spirit of Yahuwah, then by reading, by studying, by hearing the Scripture spoken, Yahuwah writes His Word on our hearts, our minds, hallelujah, today. So we know there's a conversion has to take place. It's not just walking down to some altar somewhere like I've heard many times and just get sign a little piece of paper and walk back to your seat and wait on your friends. Brother, conversion is a godly sorrow. The Holy Spirit dealing with a man and that he becomes sorrowful for his sins that he's committed. And the only way he's going to know that is by reading the Word, brother. That's how he says it here. He will put a... But he says, I will put my laws in their inward parts. In other words, when we are converted and we study, hallelujah, today he writes his word on the tablets of our heart. That's how it takes place. But you're still talking about the new bread or the new covenant here. And Jeremiah spoke about it and wrote about it. Hebrew writer speaks about it, but he's talking about laws more than one. And he's talking about putting it in our hearts, our minds. Hallelujah. His people. A spiritual body of believers today. Hallelujah. And it goes on to say, And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. So we can see he told the writer Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, and he fulfilled it in Hebrews. He was going to put his laws on our hearts. But the only way, brethren, that he can put his laws on our hearts is Today, when we are converted, people who become converted today, the body of believers, circumcised is what really it is, in the 
heart by the Spirit of Jehovah. That's why I said a godless sorrow worketh repentance. The scriptures teach that. Then by reading, by studying, by hearing the scriptures spoken, or by you reading them, Yahuwah writes his word on our hearts, our minds. Hallelujah. That's what he was saying back here through Jeremiah. That's what he was saying through the writer Hebrews. But he's talking about you and I, a godless sorrow, and we get converted or we are circumcised in the heart by the Spirit of Yahuwah. Then we go into reading, studying his word, his laws, his Torah. Hallelujah today. In Acts 17.11, the Bereans searched the scriptures daily. The scriptures they searched was the first covenant, brethren. The eunuch that Philip met in the desert, he was reading the book of Isaiah, first covenant, Acts 8, 26 through 40. So we can see that he's talking about his laws, his Torah, his covenant, even though he tells us he's making a new covenant. Hallelujah today. Let's go to the next slide. In this slide, we titled, Every Soul Which Will Not Hear That Prophet. He's talking about Yahushua. Hallelujah today. And this is out of Acts. Acts 3.19. It says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted. This is what I was talking about. Converted right here are circumcised in the heart by the Spirit. Hallelujah today that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. When the, the times of refreshing, when the Holy Spirit comes, you feel his presence in your mind you, and him enlighten you on scriptures, on what you're reading. That's what Jeremiah was talking about. And the writer Hebrews said that he would write his word on the tablets of our heart. He opens our heart to understanding, and that's a time of refreshing when you receive, receive from Yahuwah from his word. And the reason you're able to receive, you've repented, God is sorrow, you're converted, you read the word, you study it, and it's a time of refresh, refreshing, just like Peter says here, when he reveals something to you, it's just like sweet as honey, hallelujah, today, in your mind. Then the... 21st, 20 verse, and he shall send Yahushua the Messiah, which before was preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive until the time of restitution of all things, which Elohim has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So we can see in Acts 3, 19 down through 21, there's a time of restitution. That time of restitution's been going on for some time. What's he meaning? What's Peter writing about? He's talking about restoration of the doctrinal truths to men of Elohim that will believe, that are called the body of believers. This time of restitution of all things mean doctrinal truths, brethren, that have been lost. In other words, people have taught against the truth, and they're out into a lot of false teachings today, but this is the time of restitution. Peter knew about it, and today it's happening. Why? We are learning the things, and this is the time that we've learned the truth, and part of it is calendar, feast days, Sabbaths, many other things that we've learned. Time of restitution, that's what he's doing. He's restoring things to the body of believers. Hallelujah today. And this must be happening, be, must take place. And he shall send Yahushua the Messiah. All of this will take place before the Messiah comes back. It don't mean that everybody will receive and obey it. It means believers. There's a time of restitution of all things for believers that will have it. The few, the remnant, brothers, what I'm trying to tell you, that will have scriptures, that will have the things of the first covenant, even though he's made a new covenant, which we will keep on till we explain all of that. Then Acts 3.22. For Moses truly say unto the fathers, a prophet, talking about Yahushua, shall Yahuwah your Elohim raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. 
Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he says unto you. Moshe here is talking about the Mashiach, Yahushua, coming, and we are to listen to him. Hallelujah today. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Brother, and this is what is today is why I'm trying to teach on this subject about the new covenant, because he's talking about people. Moshe is right here. Truly, saith thou the Father, see. The Mashiach was raised up, but he goes on to say, and it shall come to pass that ever so, brethren, a lot of people today don't believe the Mashiach, which will not hear that prophet talk about Yahushua, the Messiah, shall be destroyed from among the people. Talk about judgment of the believers. Hallelujah today. A lot of people, even though they're in, in church system out here, don't believe the scriptures, brother. They don't believe this is going to happen. They don't teach no judgment. They don't understand the judgment. And then here, Peter's talking about the ever so, well, Moshe wrote it, which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. And Peter restates what Moshe stated about it. People that will not hear that prophet or that will not hear Yahushua or the words of Yahushua, is what he's saying, shall be destroyed from among the people. And that's literally, people can cut their time short today by their disobedience. But there's also coming a judgment of believers. Let's go to the next slide. And here, I continue with what Mashiach said. He says, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Hallelujah today. Matthew 5, 17, Mashiach speaking. This is what Matthew wrote down, what the Mashiach spoke when he walked the face of the earth with his disciples. And he says here, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I, He said, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Matthew writes down what the Mashiach said. He did not come to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill. Brethren, I was taught that the law was done away with. I was taught that you didn't have to keep the first covenant. You didn't have to obey the first covenant. But if you really look, all the commandments are located, well, not all of them, but of course, there's 612, 613, I believe it is, in the first covenant, five books of Moshe, then you got the prophets and the writings and the Psalms, all the way up, it's called Tanakh, all the way up to Malachi, into Malachi. But we see here, he said, he didn't come to destroy the law of the prophets. He said, but to fulfill. Well, we're going to tell you, he fulfilled the animal sacrifice. We put it right down here at Hebrews 10, 1 through 39. There's no more animal sacrifice for sin. That's what he fulfilled. But did he do away with the Torah? He made a new covenant. Let us continue and see how this all is working. Matthew 5, 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law or from the Torah. So we see that the Mashiach is telling us, till heaven and earth pass away, which is the end of millennial kingdom, none of his words going to pass away. So the law is still here. See, so he says pass from the law. It's not going to do it. Till all be fulfilled. Teaching and instruction, of course, means Torah. So we see that the law is still here today, and you and I are going to be judged by it. Matthew 5, 19. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments. Whosoever here, of course, covers anybody that's converted. Whosoever is converted or lost. Whoever teaches. Whosoever, he says, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments. You see what he's saying? Whosoever, brethren, sane or sinner, and shall teach men so, 
he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. This is talking about now as men walk around through this earth. Hallelujah. Hymen is an Alexander taught a false teaching about the resurrection. And Paul delivered them unto Satan to, that they may not learn to blaspheme. So it's very serious not to teach a false teaching. Then we'll continue here. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Men are supposed to be teaching today the doctrinal truths of the word. And that's when you will be observed as being a, a teacher of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Whosoever shall do and teach them, same shall be called great. Hallelujah. In the kingdom of heaven. And this verse is applying to now, not in the millennial kingdom. You and I are to be teaching today and teaching doctrinal truths. Hallelujah today. Of course, when you do, you'll be like we are. We're out in the wilderness by our, my family and I, three of us. Let's continue in Luke seventeen twenty. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of Yahuwah should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of Yahuwah cometh not with observation. Now, the Pharisees and Sadducees was always tempting him, testing him, Mashiach, testing him, tempting him, trying him. And he tells them here, the kingdom, when he answers them, Yahuwah cometh not with observation. That's what he told the Pharisees, Sadducees, both. Neither shall they say, lo here, or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of Yahuwah was within you. This is talking about when the kingdom came. It don't come with observation, he said, but it shall be in you. When did this happen? Now, Jeremiah spoke about him, writing it on the tablets of our heart. Well, it was fulfilled in Acts 2, 1 through 4, Shabbat Pentecost. That's when the Holy Spirit was given, was in Acts 2, when they were there at the temple. Hallelujah, the 120. Not in no upper room. They were at the temple praying because they were commanded to be there on the feast days. It was Shabbat. It was Pentecost. And they were there as they had been commanded to do. And this is when the Holy Spirit came and set upon each of them as cloven tongues of fire. So there's the kingdom that came without observation. And it was set up in their hearts, brethren, just as it is today when Men today are convicted of sin and they repent, a godly sorrow, repentance, hallelujah, and receive the Holy Spirit from you when they repent, hallelujah. That kingdom begins in their hearts as they begin to study and work out their own salvation with fear and tremble before a holy creator. So this is the same thing Jeremiah is talking about. He was going to make a new covenant. Well, this is when it began, started beginning to happen on the day of Shabbat when they received the kingdom. It came without observation. It was set up in their hearts and minds and still is today. And no more animal sacrifice. Mashiach fulfilled that. Hallelujah today. Let's go to the next slide. The new covenant that we've been talking about was just now being written. Jeremiah spoke about it, and now it was being written. And this was in the days of the apostles, because they were the ones that wrote it. You Mishiach had done being crucified and went back to heaven. Acts 12, 1. Now about that time, hurried the king, stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the churches. Acts 12, 2. And they killed James, the prophet of John, with the sword. In the third verse, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. This thing about the Jews here, they killed James, the, the uh, hurry did, and he saw it pleased the Jews, so they proceeded to take Peter also. Same thing going on today, brethren. Christians today, if you're a true man or woman of Yahuwah and truly have the Holy Spirit, you're going to be persecuted because we're in the times of tribulation in these last days. Fourth verse, and when he had apprehended him, talking about Peter, 
he put him in prisons and delivered him unto four corners of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Easter there, of course, is a long, wrong translation. Catholicism did that. It should read Passover. Hallelujah today. So we see that what Herod done, he killed James. This was on the days of unleavened bread. And it was, it was a time they called it. Uh, people do today as they go out here and paint their little eggs and stuff. They called it Easter. It's all pagan, brethren. This whole world is full of pagan. And I'll get into that as we bring up the next slide to go with this slide. It was time of Passover. And uh, let's continue. Let's go down to the 18th verse. And I want to show you these things for a reason. And you'll see that when we bring up the next slide. This is about Paul, 18th chapter of Acts, 21st verse. But he, talking about, but bade them farewell, talking about Paul, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem. Also, Paul was saying, by all means, he must keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem. But I will return again unto you, if you who will. And he sailed away from Ephesus. So we can see Apostle Paul was keeping a feast at Jerusalem. We can show you in a few minutes what those feasts were. And so was the other apostles. The time that they caught, caught uh, Peter and put him up was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They intended to bring him out after Passover. Now we go down to Acts 20 and the sixth verse, and Paul is still in this group of people, and then Acts says, And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. You must know the first covenant, which I was taught against that we didn't have to do none of those things. The days of unleavened bread, you would have no idea what this is talking about unless you understand the first covenant. And come unto them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. This was Apostle Paul, and the people was with him. And then we go to the 16th verse, same chapter. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus, because he would not spend the time in Asia. For he hastened, if it were possible, for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. Shabbat in Hebrew is Pentecost. So we see Paul was hastening to keep the feast days. We see here he's talking about unleavened bread. Down here he's talking about keeping the feast of, of Pentecost, Shabbat. And we'll go on to the 24, 21, 24th of Acts. And uh, the priest there at the temple was talking to Paul, and, he, and he's talking about some men there who came. If you read the story, they had an oath upon them. So he says, them take and purify thyself with them and be at charge with them, that they may shave their heads and all may know that these things which they were informed concerning you are nothing, but that you yourself also walketh orderly and keepeth the law. The priest there of the temple in Jerusalem knew that Paul was keeping the law, but there was many accusations laid against Paul that he taught against keeping the law, but he did not. As we can see here, he even hastened to be at uh, Jerusalem at Pentecost, which is Shabbat, hallelujah, today. And he also was told, even by the Levite there, it might have been James, the one that was keeping the temple, I'm not sure, but he, that he kept the law. This was what he had been, he told him that, that he, they knew that. They knew that he walked authority and kept the law. Are you keeping the Torah today? So let's go to the next slide. I want to bring in this slide deals with the calendar, but this all goes with the previous slide so I can show you what Paul and Peter was keeping in those days. And maybe someone will get a knowledge. We have all this on the Internet, but this might help you gain some knowledge from the Word. Hallelujah today. As we look at this, this is the first month of the year, Abib. Yehua 
only told Moshe the first month of the year to be named Abi. All the rest of the months was numbered, 2 through 12, and then 2 through 13 when they had a 13th month. So, and it was a solar lunar calendar. So we put in here the phases of the moon. My son and I, he tried to get this lined out so we would have a pretty close deal to the phases. You can see he's got full moon right here on the 15th. So we've done a good job on this. He and I worked on these calendars for years. This has been 20 years ago we started working on them. And we see the months in those days had 30-day months. It came up, up to here in the days of Moshe. Of course, they were changed in the days of Hezekiah. My son has a teaching on that, about the 10 degrees in the days of Hezekiah, the sundial. So we can see 1 through 30 here. This is Yahuwah's calendar. And this is the beginning of the month. It's conjunctions called Rosh Kodesh, the first day of the month. And of course, it's the first day of the week is here. The second day of the month is the first day of the week. Hallelujah today. And you have 30 days in the month in those days, in the days of Moshe. You have 30 days and 29 days today after the days of Hezekiah, when the sundial was turned back. So we got start here with Rosh Kodesh, and you go up to the eighth day here is a Sabbath. In other words, you go through Rosh Kodesh is a worship day, but you start on the second day of the month, and I listed them here, one through six, and a Sabbath day is a Sabbath day, and it is a Sabbath. Same way, one through six, and the Sabbath. Sabbath is the 15th. You go one through six. And the Sabbath is the 22nd. Same way all through the month. This is the calendar month of Abi. This is in the time of Passover. I've got this one here to show you. The 14th is the time the Mashiach was put on the stake at the third hour. And he gave up the breath at the ninth hour on the 14th. See, they put up the lamb in those days on the tenth, inspected it for four days, and it was killed at 3 p.m., uh, not 3 p.m., uh, ninth hour of the 14th, the same that Mashiach. He was questioned from the tenth to the 14th, and he stayed where he was at Jerusalem going back and forth. And he called the people that examined him in the first covenant bulls of Bashan. So that's what they were doing during those four days. They was inspecting him just like the little lamb had to be inspected for four days. That was a shadow picture of them inspecting Mashiach. Then we have the Sabbath, 15th. This is the unleavened bread all the way through the 21st. And then you have a Sabbath. Hallelujah today. The reason the it's so easy to understand this calendar if we go back to where we were at talking about the days of unleavened bread. Peter also, see, and he, this is talking about the Jews. They wanted to take Peter. Then there were the days of unleavened bread. And they was going to, they put him in prison, of course, and was going to bring him out after Easter, after Passover. See, Passover and unleavened bread works together. This is Passover. And this is unleavened bread. They are a separate time. The Passover is by itself. Feast of unleavened bread and the whole week is by itself. But when the Passover is observed in the after they kill the lamb, at the ninth hour, they begin to bake it. It's not done by the 15th sunset of the 14th going into the 15th. So they'll be eating unleavened bread with the lamb right here. Beginning the 15th, they'll be eating unleavened bread, and they eat it for seven days until the 21st. The reason these are put here, this calendar, the 15th of unleavened bread. What happened down in Egypt on the 15th, and it was... Unleavened bread. This is what established unleavened bread. Let me make that statement. On the 15th, all the ones in Egypt that had not the blood up on the doorpost, they died at the midnight when the death angel went through. He made that a memorial because he slayed all the 
firstborn in Egypt, brethren, right here on the 15th. So it is a double Sabbath. It's an annual Sabbath. It's a weekly Sabbath. Then we go out here. What happened on the 21st at the end of unleavened bread? The Egyptians tried to follow them through the sea. The armies did. And what happened to the, the armies? They drowned it in the sea on the Feast of Unleavened Bread right here. That's why he made this a Feast of Unleavened Bread, brother. There, this is a annual Moedim, just like this is a annual and a weekly Moedim. Moedim simply means a uh, Moed, which is a annual Moed. You can have Moedims means more than one. Or one more dame mean one. Moed means one. I'm sorry. The 21st, they drowned it in the sea. And he established that as a annual Sabbath day. Hallelujah today. So you can see why Yahuwah made this Feast of Unleavened Bread. They didn't have time to make no bread during this time. They ate unleavened bread. Hallelujah today. It takes time to lay out bread and roll the dough and let it rise and all these things. The ladies know that. And it, at the end of the 21st here was the last day of unleavened bread is when he drowned all of the Egyptians in the sea. Hallelujah. So we, he made those days, and those have not changed. They are still annual Moedims today. Hallelujah today. So we can see why these were the days of unleavened bread. When you read that in the scriptures now, you'll know what he's talking about right here. And that's still in the scriptures today, brethren. It's still part of the word. It's not been taken out unless man took it out. Then we go on down to the next verse here. We read verse 12 for him. What was it talking about? It was talking about Peter, and they apprehended him, and they was going to bring him out after Easter on the pagan Roman calendar. But on Yahuwah's calendar, it was Passover. This should be translated and read Passover. They was going to bring him out. So Passover is right here, the 14th. Hallelujah today. It's going to bring Peter out after the 14th, after what they call Easter. But it's the Passover day. Hallelujah today. So as we go on down, we look at again at the feast that cometh in Jerusalem. This Apostle Paul, now he was hurrying to be at Jerusalem, of course, every year he wanted to be there. The feast that cometh in Jerusalem. He doesn't tell you what this one is, but it goes on down to Acts 20 and 6, the days of unleavened bread. So the days of unleavened bread, to know what they are, right here, they're 15th through 21st. You have Passover, then you have the 15th through the 21st. These are the days of unleavened bread. These are the Moedims that we're supposed to be keeping today. Hallelujah today. So we can see that why Paul wanted to be there. Hallelujah. Then we'll go down to Acts 20 and 16. And he's talking about here, he hastened, Paul did. He says in Acts, I think it's probably Luke, a writer of this. And he said he hastened to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. Shall be out. So we, we go to Pentecost. Shall be out. It's down here. It's three months from the time the Mashiach arose from the tomb. Here he rose on the 16th. And he took the sheep with him back and to present them before the Father. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 16, 16. So we see here you got three months. You begin here on the 16th, and you count all the way down. This is 50 days. My son has a teaching on this. Yehoshua does on, on the Internet. Hallelujah. You start counting the 17th, and you go all the way down to the 6th or the 7th day of the month, and what controls that is the 30-day hour here, or 29. If there's two 30s here, it'll be on the 6th. Hallelujah today. So we can see it shall be out. Paul hastened to be there, was in those days, was either on the 6th day of the 3rd month or the 7th day of the 3rd month. So you can see why it's so important as you read the Bible to know the times 
that Yahuwah placed in the heavens, his sun and moon, to give us the days of the month. So that's why Paul wanted to be at Jerusalem here. He hastened to be there. The day of Shabbat, the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah today. And of course, when we start reading Acts 21, 24, this is talking about men that had a, a vow on them and he, they came to Jerusalem and Paul came to Jerusalem. And of course, I think James, uh, not James, but one of the Levites who was taking care of the temple, he told him, you know, that they were informed people were that Paul taught against the law and stuff like that. And he says, informing concerning thee are nothing, see, but that thyself also walketh orderly and keepest the law. Paul kept the law, brother. Every, every feast day, Paul wanted to be there. Hallelujah. This is Shabbat right here. This is the one Paul wanted to keep, Pentecost, Shabbat. He wanted to keep them all, and he did. This one's unleavened bread. He hastened to be there. This is Shabbat down here, Pentecost. Hallelujah. So we see how important it is for men of Yahuwah to study out the scriptures and present a truth to people instead of all the pagan stuff that's in the world today. Satan copied things that Yahuwah was done in the earth. He knew Yahuwah had a calendar. He knew how to corrupt the men and today, and he's done it down through the ages, thousands of years he's worked on that, and he's got a solar only calendar out there called the pagan Roman calendar. Well, they call it Roman calendar. I call it what it is. It's the pagan Roman calendar. But this is Yahuwah's calendar here. And Satan used in the pagan Roman calendar and people are going to sun worship and all that. That's what Sunday is, sun worship. My son has a lot of documents about that on the internet, about Christmas and all these other things. So we see here, brethren, how important it is to know Yahuwah's calendar. Hallelujah. He taught us the calendar 20 years ago. We've been learning it, studying it. There's many things I can spend time here and dwell on this and show you, but I'm not going to uh, stay in all of this. But this is unleavened bread. Then, of course, 50 days later down here, you had the third month. You had 50 days from then. You had... Shabbat, that's Paul wanted to be at Jerusalem. Then, of course, in the seventh month, we go down here. We didn't have any other listed for it. We could have. This is Feast of Tabernacle. It's uh, down on the 15th through the 21st, and the 22nd is a double Sabbath. This is called the last great day, and it's a double Sabbath. It's a week of Sabbath. And it's an annual Sabbath. Hallelujah today. That's why it's a double Sabbath. But this is tabernacle. It's a shadow picture of all of the children of Yahuwah that have received eternal life. Hallelujah today with their bodies. This is a shadow picture rejoicing in the kingdom, brethren. That's what they were supposed to do when they come up to Jerusalem during this time of the tabernacles. Hallelujah. It's a, it's a, you got the, uh, the blowing of trumpets, the seventh month right here, first day, it's a double, it's a uh, Sabbath of trumpets, what it's called. New moon day, blowing of trumpets, new moon day, blowing of trumpets, I put it right here. And of course, then the tenth day is atonement. That's the time that the priest went into the holiest of holies and offered blood for Israel's sins. Only one time a year. Shadow picture of the Mashiach doing the same thing. He went to heaven and offered it before the Father. Then you have the five, uh, the 15th, I'm sorry, beginning of the days of Feast of Tabernacle. I put it here. This Feast of Tabernacle lasted 20, uh, seven days. Then the last day is, is a day by itself. That's why I separate here, but it's a great Day, last day called the, it's an annual Sabbath. Last great day. It's a shadow picture of eternity after the millennial kingdom is over with. See, this, this all has reason. This is his ca uh, calendar all the way starting in Abib, and this is the seventh month, and this is a type 
of the millennial kingdom and rejoicing of the saints after they've been given eternal life, after all the evils put down, after all the world has been subdued under Yahushua's feet. This is a shadow picture of that, where the people come to Jerusalem rejoicing of the, the works of their hands, hallelujah, their, and the toil of their labor. They come up there and they rejoice, hallelujah, today. So we, we can begin to understand about this calendar a little bit here. We presented a little, but we have a lot of this in our, our documents, especially restoration of the true Sabbath day. I'd like to make one more comment before we leave to the next slide. In Zechariah 14, 1 through 21, the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast or tabernacle, this is in the millennial kingdom, there will be no rain. Hallelujah today. If they do not come up to keep the feast or tabernacle in the millennial kingdom, upon them will be no rain. So as we continue here, we will go over to the uh, next slide and continue this message about the covenant, brother. Hallelujah today. And here, as we, I want to use these main scriptures here. These are scriptures Mashiach was speaking. Of course, the disciples was writing this. This is Luke. This one's Matthew. But the parable of the rich man Lazarus, Luke 16, 19 to 21. Since we're talk, talking about the covenant, we also want to bring this in and show you the parables here. There's two parables here. Abraham said unto him, talking, this is talking a parable, Mashiach doing the speaking about Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus, of course, had already went to Abraham's bosom, but the rich man woke up in a lake of fire. These have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. This is what the Mashiach was saying. He said, Abraham said unto him, see, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Abraham is typology, believers, speaking to the rich man here. Hallelujah, Mashiach doing the speaking. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, rich man did, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. This is a rich man asking Abraham, if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And then Mashiach continues, Luke sixteen thirty one, and he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. People today, brother, do not hear Moses and the prophets. Why? I was taught against the first covenant, that we didn't have to keep any of the first covenant. All we were was New Testament saints. Hallelujah today. But we can see the Mashiach saying here, he says, if they hear not Moses and the prophets. In other words, if they don't believe the first covenant, they won't believe him, though he's going to rise from the dead. That's what he's saying here. Hallelujah. And we know that he did, but this is what he's speaking, brethren. They didn't hear Moses and the prophets, just like this man didn't. And a lot of people today are not listening to Moses and the prophets. They won't even read the first covenant. As we continue, Matthew 7, 12, these parable here, Therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Nothing's done away with. Enter you in at the straight gate. Now we're getting into the last two verses, 13 and 14. Very all of this is pertinent, but these are very, very pertinent scriptures, brethren. Enter you into the straight gate. How are you going to enter into the straight gate? Then he goes on to say, for wide is the gate, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. So that was a warning. After he tells us to enter the straight gate, then he gives us a warning. and says, many there which go in thereat. There's people going into where? Destruction. Destruction, talking about destruction, lake of fire, brethren. But he's warning people, you and I, brethren, even to strive to enter in at the straight gate. But he warns people, wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction. Then he goes on down here in the 14th verse, says, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. 
See, he didn't just say you just put your name on some piece of paper and you you converted and you got it made or you're saved. No, he says, because straight is the gate, brethren. That's a work to do. And Nara is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. So he's telling us if there's a few to find it, there's something for you and I to do. We are to search the scripture, John five thirty nine. He says, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So we can see we have to search the scriptures. Why? Because in the scriptures is eternal life. Why? Light is in the word. Men in the world out here are teaching darkness when they teach false teaching. So you can see why you have to search for the scriptures. Search for the truth is what I'm saying. Yahuwah is truth. John 6, he's the word that came down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. What doctrinal truths. Hallelujah today. Doctrinal truths. The only way you're going to know the truth is to search the scriptures. And that's where you're going to find it. And he says, few there be that find it. People today. And I've heard it years. It's been here hundreds of years before me. All this false teachings. It's nothing new. They've done it for thousands of years, brethren. They were doing it in the days of Mashiach was here. Pharisees and Sadducees. Hallelujah today. Leading ministry in those days. And it's still here today. It's not changed. So we can see here as he warns us, the the way to eternal life is straight and narrow. It's because wide is the gate. Why? All the false religions of the world. That's why it's wide gate. It's all the false religions of the world, brother. But to have eternal life, you've got to search the scriptures. Hallelujah. Because John 5, 6, 39, I believe it is, I just quoted, and he said, you, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. You think you do, brother. If you're in darkness, you don't have eternal life. You have to have light, and light is doctrinal truths, not false teachings, doctrinal truths. Hallelujah today. Let's go to the next slide. We're still talking about the covenant. In John 12, 48 here, he that rejects me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. This is what men are going to be judged by the scriptures, brethren. Don't let people steal your crown. Hallelujah today. I've heard false doctrine ever since I was converted. Hallelujah. 50, over 50 years ago. And I got out of all that. In 79, I come out of all the false teaching. But it takes a long time to get the false teaching out of you without a lot of fasting and praying. He that rejects me, talking about Mashiach. How do the people reject Mashiach today? They won't have his word. He goes on and tells you that receiveth not my words. That's what people won't do today. They'll believe a lie before they believe the truth. They don't believe the counter that we're teaching about today. They don't believe the new covenant that you have to still keep the first covenant. The only thing that's done away with is animal sacrifices. He said, till heaven and earth pass away. The other words won't be done away with. They'll still be here and you'll still be judged by them right here hath one that judges him. He says, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. The words we've been speaking in this video, brethren, is what's going to judge a man. And and this is part of it here, and he tells you so. It's not done away with. The first covenant's not done away with. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments, John 15, 14, 15. The same shall judge him in the last day. This word from Genesis to Revelation will judge all of us, brethren. In the last day, he's talking about at the resurrection and the coming of the Mashiach and us being caught up, that the remnant that's standing here with those that are in the grave first come up, then we are standing here will be changed. Hallelujah. And caught up to the judgment. 
You're not going to bypass no judgment. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul says in Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, 18, the righteous that are in the grave, the believers will come up first, then those standing here will be changed in a moment, twinkle of an eye. That's in Corinthians and Thessalonians as far as that goes. And this is when we're going to be judged at the last day, when we're caught up to the judgment, brother. Then we go on to the 36th verse in Matthew. But I say unto you that ever idle word, idle word here, brethren, is false teaching. That men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Same judgment, the day of judgment, brother. There's two judgments coming. One is the judgment seat of the Messiah right at the door. The other is the great white throne judgment a thousand years later. Hallelujah. Those that appear at the first judgment, you got the sheep and the goats, right hand, left hand. Some saved, some lost. Hallelujah today. And we have to give an account in the day of judgment. Hallelujah. We'll be standing there before a holy creator in the clouds. I know people don't understand the scriptures. Hallelujah today. But I'm trying to help people today talking about the covenant, brother. That's what I'm talking about, the covenant. And people said, you don't have to worry about keeping the first covenant. It's done away with. No, it's not done away with. It's still here. All the Moedims I just explained in the calendar, feast days, Moeds, Hallelujah, Sabbaths, all of these things, they're still here. Men will not teach it. They will not fast and pray and wear out their knees and a few Bibles to understand. And you still will not unless it's the Father's will to teach you. If you're a honest believing believer he'll teach you hallelujah you need not the man teach you hallelujah yuhuah will come and teach us all things hallelujah mishiach states that he says i and the father will come unto you take up our bow with you and lead and guide you into all truths all truths brethren out of words comes from these false teachers out here today I know there's a few good men out there. You has never left himself without a witness. Hallelujah today. But there's only a few. And we see there's coming a judgment day, brethren. People don't believe that, but it's right at the door. And we talk, we'll go back to Peter here, 417, in the 18th verse, 1 Peter 417, 18. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of Elohim. And if if it first begin at us, talking about believers, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of Yahuwah? Hallelujah. There's two things that's going to happen. These that obey not the gospel, and we're at the door when it's going to happen. In Noah's day, men died, and mankind, animal kind, by drowning. When the Mashiach comes and he sends the angels out, to cleanse the earth. All the wicked that's left during these great tribulation times we're in, the wicked, there'll be wicked people by the billions still here, will be taken by the angels and they will be carried and cast into a lake of fire alive. That's where they're going to appear. That's their first judgment. A thousand years later, they will be brought back to life, brethren, and judged again to determine how long they're going to suffer, and that will be the second death, the white throne, resurrection, and judgment. And there they will burn a lot longer. Hallelujah today. The wicked I'm talking about. First Peter 4.18, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, this is why I talked about the straight and narrow gate. If the righteous scarcely be saved, brethren, it's a trying time today for you and I. If we scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? They will appear at the white throne resurrection and judgment. Hallelujah today. As we end this presentation about the Torah, talking about the covenant, the new Brit, 
the new covenant. People said they're under the new covenant. They call it the New Testament. Said we just keep the New Testament and said we don't keep the law. Well, I got news for you. You better start studying. You ain't got a short time to do it, to find out his Torah, his laws, his statutes, his judgments, and we're to keep them. Hallelujah today. I'm under grace, and you're under grace if you have his spirit as long as you do not sin. If you sin, you go back under the penalty for that sin. It's chargeable by the law, whatever sin you committed. Hallelujah today. I'd like to tell you that, and I hope and pray if people today that understand that they have sinned, I pray they will repent and seek Yahuwah and his word. Hallelujah today. I want to finish this. Our, here's our main web page. And his, you can find a lot of our documents located on YHRIM. You can find a lot of our videos there. And this is my email. And I'd like to pray for the remnant of Yahuwah's people all around the world. The body of believers, there is still a body of believers still here. Hallelujah. A spiritual body of Mashiach, of believers. And his spirit is in our hearts today. I pray for them today. I know there's only a remnant because that's what Revelation 12 says. Hallelujah today. I bid you shalom. My name is Moshe Eliyahu. Shalom to next time.